Is this place... Does this place ring any bells, Misha? I... I don't know. But I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless, but weirdly, when we entered it, it was completely empty. Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories, and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Penacone best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles, but if you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death, which we now know as Dormancy. Considering its connection to Dreamflux Reef, it's not surprising it appeared here. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. We're drawing closer to the truth once more. Let's give Misha some time, as I believe he'll unveil the secret of this dream bubble. All right, but there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? Do you have any idea, Misha? Hmm... I guess... Maybe this way? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but... Let's give it a try. Wait, you managed to choose the right door on your- Weird. This place is quite different from the hotel. But I just- I feel like I've been here before, and even lived here for a while. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clocky and I used to sit by the fire listening to the crackling of firewood. And... and the room on the other side was... the toy room. I loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor and... making up stories for each of them. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? So... What is this place? This could be a case of amnesia. But don't worry, Misha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Those memories haven't vanished. They're just lying in the depths of your mind. We can surely get them back. Since this place seems familiar to you, why don't we explore a few more rooms and see if you can recall anything more? Yeah, then... Let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. Tick tock. Tick tock. I heard some noises from the room. Origami bird? That's a friend of mine. You and Origami bird are friends? Yeah. It's a member of the Compass crew. Uh, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one origami bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? 
Could you tell us more about the compass, Misha? The compass is a ship bound for the new world. Clarky and his partners travel through layers of fog to the depths of the sea. Whenever there is danger, Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story. But in the Panacone cartoon, Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the new world in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. So, where has Clocky gone? Did he leave to protect Dreamville? Mikhail, that's the name. Now we all know him as the Watchmaker. So, who is he talking to? Do you know anything about it, Misha? I'm sorry, I don't know much about the Watchmaker. But, Mikhail... Anything special about that name? Mikhail... is... is Grandpa's name. Grandpa? Do you mean you're the Watchmaker's grandson? But we haven't heard anything about the Watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. Could you tell us more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him Grandpa because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Every time he came back, He'd share his logbook with me and tell me about his adventures at sea. I want to become a great adventurer, just like him. It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So, perhaps it's just a coincidence? So, where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been quite a while since I last saw him. I think... I hear the sound of water. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. Look, there it is! The water resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, Overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side, and the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. Uh, you know, I quite understand such sentiments. Don't tease! I was just being a bit sentimental. Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, 
The fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh and say I was still too young. Oh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a seafarer and has nothing to do with the watchmaker. Yeah. Based on Misha's recollections, the scenes in the dream bubble appear to be his childhood memories. But this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was clearly born on an oceanic planet and led an ordinary life, with no connection to Penacony at all. Could this be... some sort of... metaphor? Perhaps the sea refers to the memory zone. I'm sorry. I don't know, but... My memories keep pouring out uncontrollably. Like water flowing from a fountain. Perhaps I'll... I'll remember more things if we go further. We're going to the opposite side, right? No. We should turn left here. Uh-huh. Something feels... different about this place. This is it. Up ahead is... Grandpa's study. It was in that room when I saw him the last time. Is our destination! The atmosphere in this room feels totally different! Misha! You finally come! Clocky! You're here! Huh. Yeah. This is the room where we first met each other. Are those books on the bookshelf logbooks left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a logbook on the bookshelf in his room. They contain records of his expeditions to every corner of the world. He described our world as a fountain. At some point, the sea started to gradually swallow up the land where people lived. To ensure that everyone had land to settle on, he had to continue exploring the sea and search for the source of the rising seawater. On that day, he called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another journey. However, I could sense the gravity in his expression. It... It was the same look I had seen on my father's face before his final voyage. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my adventure lay elsewhere and told me to stay home and patiently await a certain sound at the door. What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky. An ocean of stars. He spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away. Traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train. And that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always dreamed of would start there. A train? Could it be? It's... it's the Astral Express. I... I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by a star. Then... He gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure. A 
appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the Watch would guide me. He said, as long as I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, it was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Exactly, Misha! And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. I think I can still find the way we took back then. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed to find the exit. But where can we find the last piece? Do you remember? You said you obtained a mysterious shard when you stumbled into this place. Hey, the shape seems to match. So this shard is also connected to Misha? Looks like we're just one step from revealing the truth. Let's get to the other side and investigate. This is it. This is my room of clocks. While I spent my time waiting for Grandpa to return from his voyage, Walter gave me this workshop, and it became my secret base. Here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. I... I was born and raised here. So, this building in the Dream Bubble is your childhood home? Yes, but not exactly. To be more precise, this dream bubble itself is my home. <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Wait, wait! Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? Marge. Do you remember when he mentioned a clocky that only he could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. The answer lies in the Astral Express. His experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with clocky. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message left by someone for the nameless. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Uh... Wait... No way! 
That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I... I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather, the stuff inside ran away? And the whistle you heard, was the sound of the Express arriving at Pentacony? That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a longer story behind all this. It's best for Misha himself to explain all the details. How about we start with your name? Now should we call you Misha, or...? Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now, please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka, in the Presmere system. Adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork, or simply, Misha. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name, the Watchmaker. So, you're the Watchmaker himself? Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I am only a reflection of his life. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. A friend of Clocky. A young apprentice. And a future mechanic on the Express. And this also marks the beginning of his journey, devoted to the Trailblaze. At, At the, the end, end of the, of the journey, journey, I left, left this, this little flame, which I so, so cherished, cherished, in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams, hoping, hoping to, to pass, pass it on, on to the, the nameless of future, of future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. <laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it, and that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in his dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's what every nameless has to go through. But in the end, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until, until finally reaching Esdana, where my friends and I built the original Pentacony and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end. And I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, 
I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Peniconi, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. For the path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. I want to give you my pocket watch. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward, and has been blessed with the presence of so many great people up to this day. And my hat, too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Now, it's time for you to make your choice. Once you've made up your mind, open that door and enter the long dream of an old man. I'll be waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. All right, everyone. Let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. Of course! We've come this far. Surely there's no other option than moving forward. In that case, it's unanimous. Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please don't go! And if you must, please take me with you! Don't leave me alone! Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? Now go, board that train, and start your journey! Where are you going, Mikhail? I... I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I've promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. <sighs> I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. Hanunu needs us. Don't worry. Not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the Express, our path of Trailblaze will continue. <sighs> yeah. 
I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And, uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. Uh, but why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to... write to us. Huh? Where are you going, Watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Fanaconi. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have! Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Pentaconi if we lose you too? But what will happen to Pentaconi if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? I've spent countless sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. We Nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if, if I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next Watchmaker. Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but you're the last remaining hero in Pentaconi. If you die too, the the secret of the Stellaron will go to the grave with you. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Pentaconi, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Asdana. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade, and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So, a desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging, but what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, whatever you do, remember. Make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Misha! Huh. Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me to Dreamflux Reef. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember how you got your name, Clocky? Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yes. But what I didn't mention was, there's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid, and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages, 
and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too. And that's when you appeared in my dreams. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandma gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was a compass. So, your name should have been Compassy. And the watchmaker is just a nameless. <sighs> We've arrived at Dream Flux Brief. So, where to next? You know, Clocky, I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. I've traveled far enough, and it's time for a little break. Oh. So, we'll set out again, when you're rested? <laughs> no, I'll stay here. And then, this is where it ends. This is... where it ends? <sighs> What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed to be? I've been following you! Misha? You're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do. <laughs> With the clockwork. <laughs> no, I... I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork? Yeah. It resolves all problems in this dream. So... Do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm... I'm... not quite sure. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad, all they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. <laughs> hmm. Clocky's hands spin around non-stop, indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. But ultimately, people still need to move forward. Just, Just like, like your, your hands, hands. Always pointing ahead. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. Trailblazing. 
means taking paths your predecessors forswore, and venturing even further. The Peniconi and Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. <laughs>